If you're looking for a sign to travel to Puerto Rico, look no further. My fiance and I recently took an impromptu trip to the island with a very loose plan that we kind of just went with the flow and it worked out to our benefit. I mean, it's island time all the time there, so it's the perfect place to not have a plan and see where you end up. As soon as we landed, we picked up our rental car and drove into Old San Juan to catch the sunset. While we were able to catch goals an hour, we didn't necessarily anticipate the crazy gridlock traffic and had trouble finding parking, so uh, we kind of missed it, but we found somewhere to grab a quick drink and set up a plan of action before taking a two hour drive to Rincon. We didn't make this decision until after an ice cold margarita, but we lucked out and booked an awesome last minute Airbnb in Rincon that had a balcony and jacuzzi, which was totally clutch after a long day of travel. Now, I don't necessarily recommend waiting last minute to book Airbnbs, but this was totally clutch and um, the the owners had a seamless check-in process so we again we were really lucky the balcony was absolutely gorgeous it granted total privacy and everything was super clean i was kind of thinking maybe i would be a little skeeved out by the hot tub situation but totally not at all and if you are 420 friendly which the island is it's kind of like the perfect setup for that and as you can see, I took full advantage of that. It is legal in Puerto Rico, um, only if you're a citizen, but you know, if you know, you know. So after that, we pulled up to Faro Punto Higueras, otherwise known as the Rincon Lighthouse. And our goal for Rincon was to check out the surrounding beaches because there were several of them to see which one was the best before setting up shop. And the first one we checked out was Sandy Beach, which I can't say enough good things about it, but it's definitely a surfing destination. Rincon is known to have world-class surfing. So there was a ton of surfers in the water, but the waves were also mild enough that like you're not gonna get knocked over if you're hanging out in the water. So many beautiful views. You can walk around, take a hike. It wasn't crowded. I mean, we were there in the beginning of January. So, you know, I don't know if it was because after the holidays, I'm sure at different times during the year, it can be packed. But honestly, the month of January, we were like the only people everywhere we went on the island. So that was a little nutty. Crystal clear beaches, the water's clean, no garbage on the sand just really well taken care of and the Puerto Rican people have so much pride in their island. It's amazing. Beach number two was Step Beach and I will say it was much less impressive. Um, those steps that you see right there are the main attraction. So all in all, I would say that it's you, you can miss out on this one unless you wanna take a little photo op like I did. Um, you know, just not much to see there and there's better beaches. So kind of up to you on that. But it was fun to take the photo nonetheless. So as we continued to check out other beaches, we wanted to see a waterfall. We wanted to go feel the waterfall, be in it. And unfortunately, this waterfall called Ultimo Bronco is contaminated. And as you see, there were people in there swimming. They were calling us down, but there were signs everywhere saying it was contaminated. And, you know, on our way back, this popular restaurant called The Beach House, which we were going to actually hit for the sunset, um, was having a protest the, the residents and the locals as you can see were pulling their chairs and um at first we didn't know what it was about but pretty quickly we came to find out that the beach house restaurant dumps their waste onto the beaches and in the ocean um pretty disturbing and upsetting when you know all they have to do is invest in the proper septic system. So the more you know, if you frequent this area and you like to hang out at the beach house, maybe don't put your dollars there next time. So back to Sandy Beach, we went to set up shop and catch the sunset before making our way to El Conquistador Resort in Fajardo. 
and I'm so glad that we did. This was my second trip to Puerto Rico and honestly, it's somewhere I wanna come back to again and again because the beauty is unmatched. The beaches, there's not an overwhelming amount of seagulls or birds. Like it's just so tranquil and peaceful. I can't say enough good things about it. So we woke up in Fajardo. This is the view from our balcony at El Conquistador Resort. And I showed how it was a little cloudy at first. There's still clouds, but the rain and any bad weather can literally be washed away. So don't let that deter you from traveling to the island. And the cool thing about El Conquistador Resort is that they have boat service all day to a private island that they own called Palomina Island. And again, just so gorgeous. Like from the resort, there is no direct beach access. They have multiple pools. But again, all day you can take a shuttle service to Palomina Island. They have their own restaurant. Everything is amazing. So when we got back, we hit happy hour and just so good like private entertainment this man was playing the sax and happy hours followed by dinner and mofongo and plantains you know we're already on an island my partner had skirt steak oh churrasco excuse me what's really different about el conquistador is they have a train of sorts that takes you from one part of the resort to another and the pool is on the upper deck, which we were coming out of. And again, as you can see, the only people around, it was wild times, except for this guy. We named him Iggy. Iguanas are all over the island and they enjoy being poolside just like you and I. So just be aware that they may also be there as well. El Ion que van from El Conquistador Resort in Fajardo, Puerto Rico. So got this gorgeous day and this beautiful vitamin D. So again, going with the flow, sometimes you get a no and we didn't realize you needed tickets in advance to go to El Yunque. So we ended up at Luquillo Beach, which was a happy alternative because again, so calm, so serene. They had beachside huts selling coconuts and pastelitos. We broke open after we drank all of the coconut water out to get some of the meat. It was true island vibes at its finest. This is a must do um, if you're on the island is get a coconut, open it yourself and eat that freshness. Nom nom nom. There's a really amazing strip right by Luquillo Beach that has all these restaurants and we ended up at Ceviche Hut. The food and the drinks were amazing. It was Peruvian, so not Puerto Rican cuisine, but amazing nonetheless. And we had to leave from there because we had nighttime kayaking in the bioluminescent bay which is not pictured because we weren't allowed to bring our phones into the ocean. However, it was an amazing experience. Even though the bioluminescence wasn't at its strongest and most vibrant, kayaking underneath a full moon is an unexplainable experience. It was so tranquil and just I highly, highly recommend to do that. There were so many different companies that you can choose from. So after leaving El Conquistador, we went back to San Juan for our last day at El Moro, which is designated as part of Fort Brooke and actively used as a military installation during the First and Second World Wars. So much history, uh, so spacious, a long day of walking. This is where I will recommend sunscreen and water because it can be extremely hot and there's not much in that exact vicinity of options of things that you can get but what's important about el moro is that it was a citadel that defended san juan from incoming sea attacks during the spanish empire stay in puerto rico and it was a strategic military defense of the atlantic ocean and caribbean region and the structure itself is almost 500 years old so rich in history a must do if you're in san juan and an even better way to cap off a stay in Puerto Rico. First hit the beaches, fun in the sun, scuba, kayaking, 
all of that jazz and close it out with a little Old Town History. And you know we had to cap off this trip with one last good eat and we did it in Old San Juan. Cafe El Punto with the traditional grilled snapper, ceviche, and here you go, some entertainment. Me, oh, I hope you enjoyed our trip to Puerto Rico. Like and follow for more.